space of two weeks, the Celtic Dragon season has gone from on the ropes to full of life yet again. After finally picking up their first ever sub clash victory and sitting 1 1 between the two other sub sides, they now kick off this clash for the bullet place. Excellent Chiefs without too much pressure on their shoulders. Hello, everyone, and welcome on to Call Flag Scorpio, your home of Rugby Challenge 3 and the subscriber series, the Global Rugby Challenge, where you guys take the field and take on the world's elite in this global competition. Today, we've got the Celtic Dragons travelling away to face the bottom of the table, Exeter Chiefs. But you've got to say, no team in this competition shall be considered an easy beat. So the Exeter Chiefs are going as best they can to take that title. Their two most recent results have been losses and pretty substantial ones as well. The last time they made a subscriber side was 28-0 coming down to the Flakers, who in turn have since lost to the Dragons. Last round, however, they went down to the Lions 39-21. to And after their matches, they sit in 12, zero wins and eight losses. A team that can threaten to do a lot and have the personality to do the job as well, but are yet to deliver here on the Global Rugby Challenge. Up against them will be the visiting side, the Celtic Dragons. These guys will be full of confidence and full of running as well. I'd expect after that groundbreaking victory against the last season's champions, the Corn Flakers. Of course, they did go down the week before that to the Guardians of the Crib, the runners-up from Season 1. So they're in a peculiar position now as they look forward to caning their way through these games and into the playoffs. The starting 15 for today's match for the Dragons is as follows. The front row will be David O'Callaghan on the loose head side. Arthur Dane and Hooker and Sam Nicholl on the tight. Brother Ethan Nicholl and Oscar Conley will be in the second row together with Dominic Jones, Johnny De Rossi and Frederick Loeb lining up in a dangerous looking back row. Another nickel this time is Cody starting at scrum half with Shane O'Sullivan getting the nod at fly half. The midfield partnership looks dangerous with Tom Charles partnering Bogdan Oller. He is the new look sensation of the Celtic Dragons. Randy and Bingo will be on the left wing, Tom James on the right and Samuel Torrance gets a rare chance from the 15 jumper. All ready to get this one underway. The excellent Chicks will be playing in the predominantly black and white kit. It will be in the away strip for the Celtic Dragons here today. The white and green receiving the kickoff. And we are quickly underway. High tempo game already. And turnover ball straight away for the excellent Chiefs. They've come quickly wide. And Bingo works it over against Francis. And Francis almost puts himself into a hole. Here's Cody Nickel. He gets those wheels rolling. Support on the left side. Bogdanola! Bogdanola wide the wheels! He's a lightning speedster! And he's in for the first try! Straight away, the dragon strike! And the Chiefs are on the back foot! Well, it looked like it was going to go the other way when he saw Francis scampering downfield by himself. Look at that ball from Cody Nickel. And then it was Bogdanola playing it outside center. His first start in the 13th jumper. He's impressed at fullback. He's impressed on the wing. And now Bogdanola stakes a claim for midfield positions as well. Running away from Turner. And they were never going to stop him once he was in the clear. Bogdanola, he really is the rising star of the Dragons. Shane O'Sullivan has the nod for the tea duties today for the Dragons. Five minutes in, we're already seven on the board for the Dragons as well. The visiting side starting off with a hiss and a roar. 7 0, Celtic Dragons over excellent Chiefs. Really not the position that Chutley wanted to be in just minutes after kicking the game off. His side's conceded early and away we go yet again. Dragons on the receiving end and James pulls it into Charles. Charles through one and turnover again 
and an advantage offside Not really coming seen. against the, the Dragons but the uh, referee showing his arms everywhere. We've got an offside, we've got a not releasing, now we've got an advantage going to the Chiefs. It was Johnny Rossi, the captain. And an offside position, too tempting to make the tackle. Ooh, ooh. And Shudley is saying it to his Exeter Chiefs boys, we're going to the corner. Interesting decision, that one there for the lowly Chiefs. They're here to play and they're here to grab four points if they possibly can. Bonus point seems a bit unlikely, but they'll just start here with a try and give themselves five. They lost it though. They've lost it straight away. It's gone to O'Sullivan, and he's pummeled this downfield. Big chasing uh, group as well for the Dragons, but the Chiefs have done very well to get Police. themselves out of that position. Up to halfway they go. Waldrum runs before offloading as they continue to push it wide, and Campagnaro tries to shoulder his way through. It's there for Dennis and still going and still going. Oh, floating brilliantly on the outside. They've got a chance for the win. But Ola gets back and helps his fullback Samuel Torrance out. Great play there from the Exeter Chiefs. They keep it tight and a nice little run from Waldron. Finds support with Hill and he takes it towards the 22. Double cutout pass, triple cutout pass. It's three on nothing here. As Turner goes inside, another bus tackle. And they go side to side, length to length. And up for the try. Go the excellent Chiefs. Turner scores. And we have a game on our hands here. Great start by the Dragons. Has been quickly squashed back by the excellent Chiefs. Fantastic run from Campagnaro to create even more space to the loaded outside channels. And they went inside, outside, left and right, forward and back. But finally got it to Tana, who knew he's got the wheels. And that was great continuity by the Exeter side. They looked like they had to score. There was one man on defense out there, Tom James. James had a lot of work to do. But uh, against five men, he could not do it. What a kick. What a kick from Steenson. We have a tight ball game, folks. It is 7 7. The Exeter Chiefs fight back against the Celtic Dragons. Well, we've seen many sides of this Celtic Dragons team. We've seen the good, we've seen the bad, we've seen the indifferent, we've seen the in-between as well. Up they go to field the kickoff, but it is the Chiefs who pull it down. It is there for Yindel going to Waltram, who's found far too much space back here. He's gone out wide, Torrance chases, but it looks like Winton will be in the corner. Winton, oh he's over, Winton scores, great try for the excellent Chiefs. They've struck twice, twice in minutes, and they take the lead for the first time. And Witten scores. What a play by the Exeter Chiefs. It was a foot race. Torrance and Witten. Witten took him on. Torrance could have bulldozed him over the line. And another brilliant try. And the six and the Chiefs side look far better than we've seen from them previously. Great determination by Whitson and he has gone in for a fantastic try for the home team who now lead by five would you believe it Stinson out on the right this time that is perfect absolutely pinpoint by Gav Stinson Who saw this coming? Who's seen the turnaround of the Exeter Chiefs here today? Back to O'Sullivan by halfway. And after they led 7-0, it has changed completely. Here's a run from Dennis now. Great offloading as well from the Exeter Police. Chiefs. Pick and go for Callan Dickey. He's all alone and Charles has turned it over quickly. They get it out wide. Round near Mango for the corner and Mango. Looking to go over, but he's forced into touch. Great tackle by Dolman. 
He took him on. And he forced the issue as well. But great defense shuts that quickly down. Kendall. Oh, he's got it just to his man in the middle. And now the Chicks look to force it through their own 22. Again, a bit isolated. They do come away with the ball. Great offload and a tackle from Hill. They come wide looking for room again. Campagnaro. He has been a danger for the Stragglers' defence. No way through there. Big Police. tackle quickly up and over the ball. The Dragons, they're determined for a turnover before half time. Now it's Steenson having a bit of a chuckle through there. We lost it. And Loeb, Frederick Loeb. He powers his way up. But another good tackle this time. Dolman stops him quickly. O'Callaghan, the big boys. Trying to get involved. Arthur Dane quickly running in there. Here's Cody Nickel. The way to Dominic Jones. Squads it out to change. De Rossi, Bontanola. And you got to say, maybe he should have hung on to it there. Dominic Jones was over, but he's seen the man wide open. Didn't want to leave it to chance. Bontanola says thank you. Well, it was 50-50 if he was going to get over here, but he was. He was well and truly over. Eventually, it didn't matter too much as, well, he, he really did use the full length of the field there, Bogdanola. But Dominic Jones probably deserves this one. He's been pretty good. But uh, the ball kept alive through De Rossi, who popped it out to finally, probably the third or fourth player I marked out there on the touchline. Bogdanola grabs a double. What a revelation that man has been. Bogdanola out in the wing. He's been sensational for the Dragons. And this has the chance. Possibility to tie it all up as we head to half time. There goes the buzzer. And there goes another two points for the Celtic Dragons. And it's 14 all as we will head to half time. Neither side with an advantage. What's the first half we've had? 14 14. Excellent Chiefs, Celtic Dragons. Both sides scoring two converted tries each to get to this point at half time. But it is the Exeter Chiefs who have had a better of this game with possession and territory both nudging their way just. Both sides have kicked the ball five times away as well. But it is the tackles. That has seen the Dragons up 26 to just 16. The Chiefs have made well with football. They've had two, five line breaks to just three by the Dragons. That is an area they are going to keep on attacking with. And if they do that in the second half, the Dragons could be under threat. Handling is an area that the Dragons will want to clean up because their opponents are yet to make a mistake. Not the half I expect the Celtic Dragons were expecting, that's for sure. They would have expected to be well and truly up on this one at half time, but the Exeter Chiefs, they are still well and truly with it. Oh, Dominic Jones having a fantastic game. No, trying to bust his way on the step this time. He stopped short. O'Sullivan to Arthur Dane, and Dane will go around straight under the post. And score the third try for the Dragons. Didn't take long. Didn't take long at all. But they're finally in their straps. He tried the power game last time, Frederick Lowe. Didn't work. Looked to go with a bit of finesse. That didn't work either. But his recycling of possession has been exquisite. And it was quick ball as well. You see, just two men jump in. And then it was presented to Shane O'Sullivan. And a nippy little run from the nippy little hooker, Arthur Dane. He scoots around the back for their third try of the match. Shane O'Sullivan has been in good touch here today with the boots. Two out of two so far. He'll look to make it three. He does. In the lead for the Dragons is 7, 21-14. Dragons over Chiefs. Much closer than many people would have ever thought. This is a top four side with fourth specifically. 
up against absolute dead last. No wins. Eight losses. Nothing has gone on the side of the Exeter Chiefs this year. Great little runaway from Ethan Nickel. He gets it to Charles. It's a bit messy here from the Dragons. But they do make their way up towards the 22. Wide ball looking. It's Shane O'Sullivan who's got a lot of room out here. He's got a good chase at two. And around here, Mingo. At the back with Dolman. That's a forward pass. The mistake by the Chiefs. And the man who was the saviour earlier on has turned into Villa now. A four ball. He was a receiver. Actually, you've got Welch. to say Dolman. Find. The one guilty on this occasion. Set. There's a scrumble pack down. Cody Nickel will feed it. Oh, a good hit there from the Exeter Chiefs. They'll turn this one over. Chudley. Left side, he looks open and keeps it. Well and truly humming, it's one on one out wide here. And a bulldozing run from Turner. Who else to save this chief side? All are up in the line, it's a pick and go from Salvi. There's room everywhere here for the Chiefs. They keep it alive through the middle and Witten once more. It's turnover! Loeb does brilliantly! A Sullivan away to Mbingo. Oh, that's a high shoulder hit. And Bingo, well, Bingo's got up. He's, he's going again. Uh, no one was back 10 metres there. The referee's missed it. And a penalty goes begging against the Exeter Chiefs. Shane O'Sullivan looks for touch. Oh, that was close. One bounce over the line. And he calms it all down. Things are getting just a bit hectic there. Their players not back 10 metres from penalties. And Bingo just losing his head of touch. And Endel will have the throw to the line now. That's not straight. De Rossi says, I'll have it anyway. Tom Charles in midfield. Tom Charles on the outside. Tom Charles! Oh, yes! What a play from Tom Charles! Just scorching on the outside. No one laid a finger on him. Turnover at the line out. And Cody Nichols said, here you go. Have a go. And did he ever? He put the fan down, he swatted them away like an annoying fly in the summer weather. And he just scooted all the way home for the fourth try to the Dragons. Well, that's a bonus point. Look at Randy Abingo. He loves it. A big running, jumping fist pump from the winger who started it all with his pressure on the chase. Nearing the hour mark, and this one is slowly dying as the Celtic Dragons start to assert their dominance. But boy, it hasn't been for lack of trying by the Exeter Chiefs. They've come to play here today, and they have made a decent matchup out of it. The Dragons will be thankful for the workout, but they'll also be thankful that they'll be able to come away with a victory. 20 minutes still to go. I mean, two tries in 20 minutes is not unthought th un of, so. We better not speak too soon here on behalf of the Dragons. This one could still change. Here is Bogdan Ola had to quickly get rid of it because things were getting messy. The ball scrubbed out again. Dominic Jones just lies on it and says, no one's taking this from my grasp. Here is Loeb away to Tom James, who's been pretty exceptional on the right wing. He's been solid, done everything very well, defended nicely too. Now he chases his kick. Oh, ho, ho. Bogdan Ola has put in a big tackle there in assistance with his winger. It's a great run there from Salvi. Gets the cheeks back on the front foot. Here's Waldrum. A big pass there for the big man. And they go quickly out wide to Woodburn. And Bango can't hold on. And it's assisted at the back from Torrance, who has stolen the ball as well. Nickel, no one really wants this. It's a bit messy. And again, the Exeter Chiefs steal it. What a wasteful play by the Dragons. Another chance for a turnover there quickly on that ball. Big tackles coming in from the Dragons looking for that turnover. They should have slipped up the ball in the first place and they wouldn't have had those troubles. Here we go, Witten, Lake and Bagnaro finding room out for Stinson. Extra wide again. It's oh, wow. It was out to Turner who's been the go-to man. But man, I've never seen a player drop so quickly. That was a classy tackle. 
We're inside the final 10 minutes, so you'd imagine this should be done enough now by the Dragons to put this away. Here's O'Sullivan. He's going to go for a... Oh, a scamper! Oh, O'Sullivan's done very well! Jones takes a tackle! Bogdanola! Hattrick incoming! Put the lights on! He's coming home! Bogdanola scores his third! What a revelation this young man has become for the Dragons. Bogdanola, take a bow. Here's a way to identify your stars. Put them in the game. Make them work and make them pay off. This is what Bogdanola has done today. He has been simply amazing for the Dragons. The break, though, was all Shane O'Sullivan, who's had a pretty good game as well. No one quite at the margins that Bogdanola has achieved. But a great start to round nine for the Dragons and for the subscriber sides at Kansas in the end. It looked easy on the scoreboard now. But it was a bit of a toil through that middle. And they did have to work very hard to get this result. Don't even think that this one's over, however. There's still time for a restart, I do expect. And Shane O'Sullivan, oh yes! Superb kicking. And the Dragons, the only side to have two players in the top five of leading point scorers. That's how versatile the likes of Andrew Inch and Shane O'Sullivan are. Rotating their roles, scoring a lot of points as well. Kicked off again from Chudley and has gone high and picked up by the Dragons and Cody Nichols going for a run. Arthur Dane on his left, squirts it out to him, he shrugs away one. There goes full time. Coming back for it now is Sam Nicol. Oscar Connolly somehow gets it out the back to O'Sullivan. And that's going to be a turnover ball back to the Chiefs. And here they come now themselves. Finding room out wide. Yendall does well with a dummy. Puts it back out wide to oh, Ollie Woodburn who says get out of the way. Salvi! Oh, it's absolutely dominated. There is some smashing hits going on here. Here's the Witten runaway again. He gets up towards the fullback and Torrance puts him down and Arthur Dane steals the ball. Back it comes to the Dragons and no one, actually no one got in that breakdown at all. Cam Bagnaro goes inside, Yendall's involved yet again. It's a good play from Waldrum. Into the 22 they go. Who wants to put this game to bed? No one! Because it's Cam Pagnaro again! Samuel Torrance, he's had to work. He's had to really put in a shift. Release. 15 metres out. Pick and go from Woodburn is held up and driven back as well. Waldrum. Goes one out to left side to Stinson. Turnover from Dane once more. Connolly into the contact. Release. This time he's got friends. They look to recycle it. Ethan Nickel fires wide. James hasn't had much to do today. Oh, and that's probably why he has been dominated in the tackle. And it's turned over again. Back to the Chiefs. Back for the try. Just reward for the excellent Chiefs. Deserve their final say as the Dragons just would not let it die. Johnny Hill, the scorer. But Turner with the turnover and the big second row on three defenders. Oh, wow. This, though, was clinical. It was textbook. It was perfect. Turnover from Turner. And then three defenders could not put him down. Dominic Jones hanging on to the bitter end but could not stop the momentum. And like we were just saying minutes ago, these two sides have had a real battle. The Dragons have had to work. The Chiefs have made them work. And the scoreline still, even at this point, does not reflect how much of a contest this was. The Dragons come away with an away victory. And they continue to charge back towards the end of the season. Five points in the back, no matter what way you look at it. The result was close. They made a few errors. But at the end of the day, they took all the points on offer. And they must be happy enough with the outcome of this game. It's gone from a low to a high. Now to 
a bit of an in-between, happy with the result, happy with what they come away with. But overall, against the bottom place side, you've got to put in a better shift than that. 35-21, you look at the Flakers, they put these guys away 28-0, so scored an extra try, but let in three of their own as well back the other way, 35-21. Three tries scored, Hill, Turner, and Whitson Steenson converting all three of them from the sidelines as well. He was very, very good off the tee, Steenson. As for the Dragons, Arthur Dane scored one little ripper. So did Tom Charles, but the day belongs to Bogdan Ola. Three tries, turning his tally nicely up there with the leaders as well. Shane O'Sullivan, five out of five, a good match by the fly half. Well, the full-time stats haven't done a huge amount of change a tiny bit more possession for the dragons but they still couldn't crack the 50 percent mark their dominance though on territory almost 60 40 to the chiefs the high tackle well that didn't come to much did it but it still makes the stat sheet the handling here is right for the second half 11 by the dragons who got very wasteful and very lazy especially at rack time and trying to find support players as well chiefs let in a few of their own also Penalties conceded down the bottom. A fairly quiet night, though. Both sides are giving it all. But in the end, it'll be the Dragons that come away with the five points. And that'll go a good way towards getting them further up the table. So round nine has kicked off. A good win for the Celtic Dragons over the Exeter Chiefs. You can see next match, we have the Corn Flakers up against the Crusaders. So what does this mean for the table? Let's take a little look here. We can see the Dragons now have gone straight to the top. They are number one, but have played the extra match, of course. Points of rental for the Dragons, very, very good. Still over 100, where two of the other subscriber sides still cannot say that themselves. Just four bonus points, though. Could be their downfall. It's only going to take a win for the Guardians and the Flakers to take back that spot over the Dragons. But keep in mind, however, that the All Flakes do play the Guardians this round. So either way, we are most likely going to either see the All Flakes up into possibly second or third spot. We could see the All Flakes behind by up to six points if things do not go their way. Trailing by third as well. So it all could go horribly astray here for one of the two sides. Of course, the All Flakes have all three subscriber sides to play. So there's huge pressure on this team to get the job done. And you've got to look at it and say they should be the only team to have won eight matches because they have not played the other subscriber sides. Yet they drew that shocker against the 11th placed Clermont. So that is not something that they will want to, will want to reflect on, the All Flakes. They'll want to make sure they get that victory over the Guardians and keep this table nice and tense. But as for other results around this competition, we have seen Munster get up over the Lions, 13 points to 11. Next up, of course, Crusaders, Flakers. We've got Scarlet's Clermont, uh, All Flakes, Guardians, and Toulon Wasps to round out round nine. Of course, there's just three rounds remaining. Remember that nine, 10 is there, and of course, 11 before it is quarterfinal time. So, I mean, it's not long to go. Another eight episodes of matches. And we're in playoffs, um, 10, I guess, if you count Team of the Week in there as well, or 11, I should say, out of the final round, Team of the Week 2. But, um, yeah, there's a lot to happen still, but we are pretty much in the closing stages of the competition. That is about me done for today, though. Thank you all for tuning in and watching. Hope you're enjoying this series. Uh, Celtic Dragons players and fans, what did you think of that? Performance happy, not too happy. Think of improvements that you need to go on. And of course, team of the week. Where does your vote go for the opening match of round number nine? Some real standouts, of course. You can't go past Bogdan Ola, who I thought was just tremendous. Shano Sullivan, pretty good. Tom Charles was decent. And Samuel Torrance, you've got to give him credit. He had a lot of work to do at fullback too. So the back line definitely did their role. Dominic Jones thought in the forwards was good as well as the Nichols. I mean, the Nichols are always superb for the Dragons. That is it for today, though. Thanks for tuning in. Um, I'll see you all for our next match, we'll which will be the Crusaders versus the Flakers. Until then, thank you for tuning in and watching. If you're enjoying, hit that like button. And, of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get all this content 
straight to you as soon as it comes out as well. But until next one, take care.